Hey guys, um, I have this painting behind me. I painted it like 10, 12 years ago and it's been hanging on my wall in my house. I've looked at it over the years and I kept thinking to myself, I should probably repaint that. I really love the concept of it, the hands, and it's actually me <laughs> sitting in the hands. The title is In Good Hands. So we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a sec. But um, yeah, I just kept thinking I either wanted to start from scratch and repaint the idea on a fresh canvas. I really love the concept. So, but <laughs> things got um, busy and I just never got around to it. So the other day, we live here in Florida, it was crazy windy. I mean, this has been hanging on my wall for literally like 12 years, maybe longer. And the wind blew it off the wall. It fell and it hit a book, bookend thing and it punctured it. So there's actually a hole here that I have to repair and a few scrapes came down. But the main thing that I, uh, the reason why I really wanted to redo it, there's two. Hey, here's a quick announcement and then we'll get right back to the video. Hi guys, have you ever wanted to learn how to paint a portrait, but you just didn't know where to start? Well, I've got good news for you. I have a free online workshop coming. It's gonna be February 16th, 17th, 18th, and February 20th. You can select the day and time that works best for you and join me live where I will demonstrate for you three proven ways to start a portrait that will definitely get you to um, a finished portrait that's expressive and beautiful and that looks like your subject. All right, I hope you guys join me. You can go into the description, um, click on the link and you'll sign up for the day and time that works best for you. It's about a one hour online workshop and I will see you there. The face for one, it's very, illustrate kind of, it it's really doesn't look like me. The eyes are too big, it's exaggerated. I mean, I, <laughs> I'd like to think that I've improved a lot since I painted this. So that's the thing. The face has to get sanded off completely and repainted fresh. So there's that, the face. But the skin tone, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty jaundiced here. Uh, it was in full sun, the idea of it. So I kind of went with the yellow overcast of the skin. I don't know what I was thinking, but it's not working for me anymore. So I want to make the skin tone like a little more realistic, a little more neutral or pink in color. And I think I could zhuzh the hands and make those a little bit better. I've got this weird, cool blue shadow thing going on. I think, uh, I'd like to follow the idea of warm shadows and cool light. Although what I've painted here is really warm light and cool shadows. So I don't know, I'll have to think about that for a minute. But typically I like to do cool light and warm shadows. Hmm, thinking. But I do love the background, so I think I'm just gonna stick with that. But uh, let's, uh, let's uh, sand her face off. Sand my face off. So I don't remember if I used lead primer or if I used um, white paint with lead in it, like flake white. So I'm gonna wear a mask and gloves just to be safe. No need to be poisoned. No lead poisoning here. So, mask, hopefully you can hear me. I'm gonna be using like a 600 grit sandpaper. I have a sander, but I'm going to um, do it by hand. I think that will be better. So, let's... Uh, let me give you a close-up view of the face before I sand it off. Okay, hold that thought. So here's a look at the face. And I'll show you 
the hole that I have to repair is there in the hand. I think it's doable. And there was just some marks that need to be cleaned up. So that's a close up view. So here's a look at the full painting. It's pretty large, 48 by 60. Okay, I'm going to start sanding. I want to get as much of the paint off, but I don't want to go through the prime layer. I'm hoping just to get down to it and then I'll paint with titanium white. I'm not even going to use primer. I'm just going to go with the white oil paint over top of the face area to get it ready for the new layer. I really don't want any of these dark pieces. I can get rid of those fully. That'd be ideal. Ooh, this is quite a workout. <laughs> this isn't the first painting that I've sanded a face off of. <laughs> I've done it before and more than likely I'll probably do it again. And I want it nice and smooth. No strange ridges. Getting close. That's looking pretty good. Whew. Okay, you can really see that there is nothing left of that face. It's gone. So I'm gonna wipe it with a damp paper towel, damp cloth, and actually a torn up t-shirt because I don't want any lint getting into it. I'm gonna clean the whole painting with a mixture of ammonia and water. That's one part ammonia to five parts water. And then let it dry fully. And then I'm gonna cover the face with a little bit of uh, titanium white oil paint. And then will be ready once that dries. I'm gonna give it a couple of days to dry and uh, then we'll check back in and start painting in this face and figuring out what we're gonna do with the rest of it. Those are some really uh, highly saturated blue um, high top converse because you know that's what you want to wear when you're sitting in a pair of hands. <laughs> so I gotta figure out if I'm gonna Tone that down a little bit, unsaturate some parts, just leave a little bit of uh, the saturated blue peeking through, maybe in the areas where it's the brightest sun hitting them. That's probably the uh, smart play to go there. I'm gonna wipe off some of this dust. The lint free, it's like a polyester performance t-shirt. It's a lot, a lot of paint, residual dust. You wanna get all that dust off. And leave no lint behind. So while I'm waiting for the ammonia water to dry, um, I was just thinking, I hope I, uh, hope I made the right decision. You never know. Sometimes it's nice to have the original painting uh, to compare the new painting to. Other times I think maybe I don't want the original painting hanging around because it wasn't really good in the first place. So sometimes I think it's better just to get rid of the bad painting altogether so I can replace it with a newer, much better one. As long as the concept's there, I mean, a good thing right um, I think if you have a good concept that's half the battle I mean you want to try to uh, think of paintings that I like to think of paintings that have an, uh, 
been presented to me yet. I've never seen it before, or at least I haven't seen it a lot. So I, uh, I've never really seen a painting like this before. So I think it'll be good to uh, have a good, fresh, new version of it without an old version existing to, I don't know, devalue or undermine, what's the word? Uh, to uh, discredit, I don't know. <laughs> Do any of those words make sense? Who knows? But I just, uh, I like to think that I made the right decision by getting it off the wall. <laughs> that I made the right decision since it was uh, ripped off the wall and thrown at my feet. Basically, it was the universe saying, yes, you need to repaint this. And uh, it's time to do it now. <laughs> so that's where we're at. All right, let's see if it's dry. Yep, I think we're ready. I'm gonna put a little uh, titanium white paint on my handy dandy palette. I love this wooden palette. And I'm gonna apply the paint pretty thick. Now once this initial layer of white oil paint dries, I'll sand it down a little bit just to make sure there's no ridges. This should be nice and smooth. I'm using a soft brush, kind of a fluffy brush. I just want to put a nice even coat across the face and like I said I'll be sanding it smooth after it dries. I'm going to feather it out into this hair a little more thin. Not using any medium, just the white paint straight from the tube. That's how I like to paint. Paint straight from the tube. I'm not going to change the position of the face. It's going to be exactly where it was. Just painted better. <laughs> so I'd like to hope. So I just found out a really cool. Um, Part of my husband's history. His uh, father is from Belgium and his last name is Vandermeulen. Yes, that's Dutch. It means of the windmill. And we just found out that he has an ancestor whose name is Adam Franz Vandermeulen. And we found out he was a painter and he was in the court of Louis XIV at Versailles. He was known for depicting battle scenes and his ability to paint horses really well. So that's pretty cool. So there's a uh, royalty uh, connection there with the Vandermeulen uh, name and art. That goes back to, I believe it was the 1400s, 1500s, somewhere in that world. But he's, his paintings now are in Versailles, so one day it'd be really great to go there and actually see them in person. Yeah, and Adam Franz Vandermeulen. That's good. Things pretty smooth. And just let that dry and then I will sand it perfectly smooth for the face. Yeah, that looks good. And there we have it. 